I'm going to tell you the story of two brands, one which failed to innovate, while one excelled at exploring the boundaries of what was possible. We're also going to share how sometimes organisations only become possible with perfect conditions. It's the late 1990s and Blockbuster, founded by David Cook, already had over a decade of success with its signature blue and yellow colour scheme and expansive selection of movies. Blockbuster had quickly become a household name, attracting millions of customers across the United States. Throughout the late 1980s and 1990s, Blockbuster embarked on a rapid expansion spree, opening thousands of stores in neighbourhoods and shopping centres nationwide. Yet it was this store expansion that ultimately led to its demise. In 1997, Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph had a simple idea when it came to renting DVDs. They wanted to provide a convenient and cost-effective alternative to traditional video rental stores like Blockbuster. Netflix's innovative subscription model allowed customers to order DVDs online and have them delivered to their doorstep. This disruptive approach quickly gained traction, attracting subscribers across the United States. However, many of you probably weren't even aware that Netflix once posted out DVDs. And that is because in 2007, Netflix introduced what it has become renowned for, that being its streaming service. Recognizing the potential of streaming technology, Netflix shifted its focus from DVDs to digital content delivery. So while Blockbuster had thousands of stores with thousands of staff and hundreds if not millions of physical DVDs, Netflix offered unparalleled convenience and instant access to a vast library of movies and TV shows. This move transformed Netflix from a rental service to a streaming giant, forever changing how we watch entertainment. No trip to the store anymore for us. Blockbuster tried to adapt, but it was too little, too late. And in 2010, while Netflix had surpassed 20 million subscribers, cementing its position as a market leader, Blockbuster had filed for bankruptcy. And with no need for stores, Netflix wasn't confined by the United States. It embarked on an ambitious international expansion, launching in Canada in 2010 and gradually expanding to over 190 countries. As Netflix soared to new heights, competition has intensified. Rivals such as Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney+, HBO Max, and more recently Paramount, have entered the streaming arena, all vying for subscribers' attention. Netflix has faced challenges on multiple fronts, including content licensing agreements and debates over net neutrality. With this growing competition, Netflix has continued to evolve its offer. It began to invest heavily in its own original content, and in 2013, it made the groundbreaking move with the release of House of Cards, its first original series. This strategy has gone on to make shows such as Stranger Things, The Crown, and Orange is the New Black, with many gaining critical acclaim, earning numerous awards and nominations. Most importantly, they have helped to grow the audience. Netflix has continued to innovate and diversify its offerings. It introduced interactive content like Black Mirror Bandersnatch, allowing viewers to choose their own narrative path. And most recently, Netflix has ventured into gaming with plans to develop original games based on its popular intellectual properties. These moves signal Netflix's commitment to staying at the forefront of entertainment innovation. From humble beginnings as a DVD rental service to global dominance in the streaming era, Netflix's journey has been meteoric. And in some ways, more importantly, its impact on the entertainment industry has been huge. And as it continues to evolve, one thing is certain, the future of entertainment is streaming. So what can we learn from the story of Blockbuster and Netflix? Well, be open to the future. Digital offers can work across boundaries and borders. IP is king. Will Netflix continue to win without the back catalog of other streamers? We'll have to wait and see. And don't forget, convenience wins. Subscriptions trump one-off purchases. And finally, as a question, is volume of content better than quality? I hope you enjoyed the fable today. Do give us a like and do consider subscribing. We post videos nearly every week about founder stories, design, design thinking, brand and digital. Thanks again and see you in the next one.